Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. So I'm going to share with you guys another knife from Mass Drop, and I know I've done a couple of videos lately about them, but just happened to work out that way. I bought one and then I've had two prototypes on loan. So one of them that I showed you is the one I bought, which was the Mass Drop Gent. Killer value, you know, 80 bucks, amazing materials. It doesn't matter who you are, it is an amazing value. The next one was the collaboration with Millet called the Perpetua. Uh, for an American-made knife, really great value. The next one, we're jumping up in price and we're actually heading more towards kind of where the enthusiasts come into play. And we're going to take a look at a knife called the Prism. And this is a collaboration with, you know, Mass Drop again, Tashi Barucha, and then a manufacturer who requested not to be named. And Mass Drop and Tashi are unwilling to share, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, we'll go through the specs, overall impressions, and details uh, with this knife. And I do have a few different size comparisons. So, you know, again, the other mass drop, the Gent here, the uh, Perpetua, um, a little bit larger side here. We have the Chris Reeve uh, Sabenza. This is the large one. And then the next one, Spyderco paramilitary 2, also a very common knife. And then last but not least, another Tashi design um, made by a company called Riot Knives, and this is the Tashi Future. So, um, anyways, so spec-wise, um, blade length of 3.4 inches, handle length of 4.2 inches, giving us an overall 7.4. Does weigh in at 3.6 ounces, which is fairly light, but obviously quite a bit of skeletonizing. Blade steel RWL 34 does have the logo. Again, this one is a prototype setter. There will be at least one change that we'll talk about, and it does use an opening hole to open it. So you can use your middle finger, you can use your thumb. Um, it does run on bearings, so it's super smooth. Uh, it has a stainless steel lock insert, which helps prevent stickiness and just increases the wear life of the lock face. Um, the rest of the knife is constructed of titanium. So those are the specs for the most part. I guess the last one handle thickness, 0 0.46 inches. So um, I think that is pretty much it. it does have a right-handed tip-up pocket clip only. Um, cannot be swapped for left-handed users. And there's a number of different variations. So this one is bronze with a hand-rubbed satin blade. Um, they'll also have ones that have um, black PVD coated blades and handles, uh, gray handles, bronze handles, black handles, blue handles, um, different types of anodizing for the titanium. And then the blade could either be hand rubbed, stone washed, or again black coated. So, quite a few different variations. Um, the last component for the specs is the price, and for at least for this initial drop, they're coming in at two hundred and thirty-five bucks. Which, you know, again, if you're used to some of Mass Drop's other drops, may not sound like a good value. But when you compare it with some of the other Tashi collaborations out there, especially done to this quality level. Um, it actually is a pretty good deal. The other Tashi design that I showed you, this one was $475. Um, Tashi has another collaboration coming out later this year with Riot called the Mini Machine, and that one's probably going to be closer to $350 or $400, and it's fairly similar to this one. So, you know, again, when you're in that enthusiast market, this one is coming in at least $100 or more or less than um, the next most comparable option, to be honest. So, you know, there's there's still some element of value there, um, at least for enthusiasts. So, anyways, um, overall impressions, fit and finish is phenomenal. Um, it's it's a beautiful design. Um, Tashi is very well known in the knife world. Uh, Tashi Barucha as a knife designer. This is this is unique and it's it's funky. It's very functional. Um, really good ergonomics. Lightweight. Um, you know, a non-threatening design, um, and yeah, I mean, I I really, really like it. I have nothing bad to say about this knife. I, I love the design. I love the price. Um, to me, this is a home run, and this is the mass drop knife that, you know, 
among the three that I showed you that I'm most excited about because it delves into the kind of that enthusiast realm where I sit very heavily, uh, more so than the other two, although, again, they're all excellent knives. So um, let's look at it in a little more detail. I've got fingerprints all over this. Let me wipe it down real quick. Um, but take a look at this blade here. So, you know, a, a drop, a, a very wide drop point, um, got a tiny bit of belly, so it's not quite a Warncliffe, but a little bit of belly right there. Blade stock isn't too thick, um, 0.16 inches or 4 millimeters thick. And then it has a what's called a full flat grind. The grind goes all the way up to the top and it comes down to a, a pretty keen edge. This one came razor sharp. So slight swedge at the front. Again, the vertical lines you see are what's called a hand rub satin blade. So someone sat there with sandpaper and basically rubbed this thing for a while. I mean, it, you know, probably at least an hour, maybe more's worth of time of hand work into this blade. So um, very beautiful, just a very functional design. Um, I love the way that, you know, essentially the blade here comes down to uh, just about in line with or below the knuckles, as you can see here by the way that the, the knife is shaped. So very functional cutting tool. Um, yeah, really, really like it. The opening hole is, um, I don't know, this interesting shape here fits in line perfectly with the handle design as you can see and it, again it works in a variety of methods um, it's really easy to manipulate it's really easy to open two-handed one-handed uh, doesn't matter so yeah really well done really really well done top of the blade um, they chamfered the edges a little bit so nothing's you know sharp from the top and the design, the way that the handle is shaped, it really begs for you to just choke up really far on this knife, get a lot of control. So, yeah, great design. Um, if I haven't mentioned, this is based on a custom knife that Tashi Barucha makes called The Church. And I, as I recall, it's slightly larger. Now, you basically have to go to knife shows in order to get a custom model directly from Tashi. It's going to run you at a minimum at probably $1,200. So this one at $235, you get the same design, but again, <laughs> significantly less expensive. And then, you know, if you go to the secondary market to pick up, you know, his custom version of the church, I'd honestly say probably closer to $1,800 or $2,000. So, I don't know, food for thought. If you're an enthusiast, you already knew all of that. If you're not, then something fun to think about. Anyhow. So again, pivot runs on bearings. It does use ceramic bearings, um, ceramic detent ball. Very, very smooth. You know, this is not a thick piece of blade stock, and so um, it's just really smooth, really well done. Handle is titanium, of course. Bronze stone wash. There is Tashi's maker's mark that you will find on his um, all of his knives, you know, uh, production and custom and so forth. So, yeah. Now, again, um, the manufacturer has requested that Mastrop not name them, and they wouldn't tell me it, but, you know, just want to kind of put these two side by side here for a moment. Both Tashi designs, both have incredible fit and finish. Uh, both have the same kind of stonewashed bronze coloration here. And, uh, you know, the maker's mark. The laser work is quite remarkably similar as well, so just kind of two peas in a pod if I, you know, really had to say something about it there, so, uh, yeah, again, that one's made by Riot. Anyways, moving along here, another really cool thing about the, the handle frame of this knife um, is that it does not have a backspacer like, you know, maybe like this Chris Reeves de Benza does, it's got a large backspacer. This one, the backspacer is integral to the two separate frames, and so they meet in the middle to form the backspacer. And this is a you know a more expensive form of production because essentially you had to take two pieces of titanium, a little bit thicker than both handle scales, and then just you know machine away a whole bunch of material. So um, this method is um, just more costly to produce. It's kind of a I don't know a nicer method. It's not stronger in theory. Well. Who knows? Anyways, it's a more expensive method of production, certainly, 
than you know something that utilizes you know backspacers and two thinner pieces. So uh, pretty cool. You know, again, kind of plays into that value proposition if you are an enthusiast. Um, you also have a 3D milled pocket clip here made from titanium. Fits into the you know the handle design, the machine, the uh, the cutouts perfectly, so it almost disappears. Again, just attention to detail, something Toshi is very well known for as a designer. The cutout in the back of the frame here can also serve as a lanyard hole if you want to attach a lanyard to it. And as you can see, the blade does not, you know, come anywhere near this this back piece here. It's completely enclosed or encased. So you can use that piece if you want to attach a lanyard. Now the let's see anything else on the frame screw construction uh, again it is a frame lock and it does have that stainless steel lock insert chamfering on the inside of the handles for ease of disengagement again it's it's very very well executed a uh, blade steel I probably glanced over this briefly but it is RWL 34 um, it is made by Dama Steel uh, they're in Sweden Switzerland something like that um, but essentially it's comparable to another blade steel called CPM 154 both in terms of performance and relatively close in terms of composition so if you're not familiar with this steel you can look up specs on this steel or you can look up information on CPM 154 um, again the that last point is open to debate as enthusiasts like to debate debate endlessly but it's it's good info so stop pin that's how it lines up, and let's see, what else were we going to talk about on the handle here? Oh, where the blade sits. Um, the tip of the blade is tucked very nicely into the frame. Um, I cannot get my finger anywhere near the tip, so it's you know well designed in that regard. Now, the one change that might occur on this knife, and again, I don't really necessarily think it needs a change, but here on the back, the tip of the blade does come up towards the back of the frame so it's still in there um, you know with my finger I cannot get down into it to touch it I'm pushing down as hard as I can can't can't touch it can't cut myself but they might be reducing the height of the blade here a tiny bit to get it further away from the back of the handle so that's the one possible change that might be occurring and again it's it's worth mentioning but I mean it's you know the production version is going to be 99% accurate to this uh, prototype which I have here in my hand so anyways I think I think that's it um, so again this is the um, Mastrop and Tashi Barucha Prism uh, fantastic knife I am I, I love this piece um, love Tashi's designs it's it's funky it's unique it's useful it's beautiful it's I have nothing but good things to say about this knife, so I cannot wait for the production run to, you know, get made so I can pick mine up. Again, the premise is, and, you know, check the link in the description box below, but it's a group buy. You go in, you prepay, you wait a couple months, it gets shipped to you, so, you know, you are going to have to have some element of patience with regard to that, you know, significant savings, essentially, um, you know, versus comparable options. So. If you want more info, if you want to take a look at um, uh, more information on the specs, more pictures, if you want to go jump in on the group discussion regarding this knife and this drop, a uh, link is in the description box below. So anyways, that is, uh, I don't know, my thoughts or impressions of the Prism here. I've had it for a couple weeks. I've not been able to share it up till this point until the drop went live. So you can always follow me on Instagram for more daily content, also as Epic Snuggle Bunny. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you do pick one up or decide not to, comment in the uh, comment section below here on YouTube. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care.